Hey everybody, my name is John from Community Life Church and this is Meals Ready to Eat from the Bible. We would really appreciate a like and subscribe. Today's episode is Jesus Forgives. Jesus has authority to forgive and we do too. Today we're going to take a look at the second chapter of Mark, verses 4 through 5, let's see, and 7 and 9 through 11. Jump around a little bit, and then we're going to break it down and see just exactly what God is saying to you and to me today through these passages. So let's get started, read today's scripture. Being unable, and it's on the screen for you, being unable to get him, to get to him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. Some people were coming to see Jesus and they couldn't get into the room where he was. This is their story. And when they had dug an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic man was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. So why does this man speak this way? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? These are some of the Pharisees, the religious authorities who were in the room. And Jesus replied in verse 9, which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and pick up your pallet and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your pallet and go home. And that's exactly what the man did. <coughs> Excuse me. So last week we looked at this topic a little bit. Going to look at it a little bit more today. And what is this topic? Well, it's forgiveness, receiving it and giving it. Two pieces to forgiveness. Well, to begin with, the religious authorities of the day told Jesus he had no business forgiving sin. Jesus did so anyway. He said, your sins are forgiven. This, you know, got them very upset. And it tells us two things. First of all, the authority is God's alone, and Jesus does it too. Jesus must be God. Again, as you recall in the beginning of uh, the Gospel of Mark, uh, some people may claim that the Gospel of Mark does not uh, have a statement of Jesus declaring that he is God. Well, right here is another one in addition to the beginning of the book of Mark. So this created a dilemma for the religious authorities. They were confronting something that, because of their knowledge and tradition, they could not accept. They could not accept Jesus forgiving sin. This continues to be a, a stumbling block for a lot of people today, and many people just don't get the fact that Jesus is God, and that all that God can do, he can do. Healing, forgiving, miracles, raising from the dead, all this stuff are no problem for God and for Jesus. Jesus is God. A very important, a very important foundational point for uh, the Christian faith. Secondly, forgiveness was a problem for people back then and for us today. Why? Well, sometimes we think and act like Jesus cannot or will not forgive us. Jesus always is always willing to forgive those who come to him in repentance. There is no other requirement other than that we turn to him in repentance. That's it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 9. Further, the fact that Jesus will conf forgive those who confess removes the authority's ability to control the people. In other words, you don't have to come to me if you sinned against God, you go to God. Using the law to keep people in check was now replaced by God himself being in charge and the people answering and seeking after him, after God, going after God. The people now had the responsibility. I now have the responsibility, as do you too, to go after God ourselves. We cannot rely on someone, someone to do this for us. This creates a dilemma for us. It creates a little confusion sometimes too. But if Jesus forgives us and he is our example, we have to forgive others. This is something that's required. Yes, it is true. We do have to forgive others. It's a requirement of the gospel. We see this later in Mark uh, 25, excuse me, uh, Mark 11, 25. Let me just read it. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father who is in heaven will also forgive your transgressions again that's mark eleven twenty five. clearly we are commanded to forgive those who wrong us do wrong against us this does not relieve them of the responsibility for what they did but but it is required of us so in other words when i forgive someone who offended me or did wrong to me it lifts a burden off of me but it doesn't relieve them of the requirement to make it right and to repent and so on and so forth all of this is preceded by a demonstration of faith of the man and his friends who were healed. They knew that all they had to do was get close to Jesus. All they had to do was get in his presence and something good would happen. 
this is more than just saying a few words or like, I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus and this will happen. This is a way of living. This is what they did. There's more than this than just saying words and doing this, that, and the other thing. They had to get up and go. And they got up and went. And we have to do the same thing as well. We must live like Jesus is doing what he said he is doing. And will do what he said he's going to do. This is just what those people did. And we have to do it as well. We must all get up and go to where Jesus is. Simple. Finally, remember to pray the way we are told to pray. In the book of James, chapter, let me just get this right, chapter 5, verse 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. So, how do we get righteous? What do we do to get righteous? Through the repentance of faith, we are considered righteous by Jesus, by, be for, by being forgiven and by forgiving. And that changes everything. Thanks for watching. You can find us 1030 Sunday mornings at 20 West Main Street, Catskill, New York. If you can't make it, we stream our service on Facebook and YouTube. And follow us during the week for more videos and devotionals. Thanks again.